Hey there everyone, it's Coach Carly and I thought I would show you what I like to do with my plantains since I know a lot of people haven't used them, worked with them, cooked with them before. Um, maybe you've had them out at a restaurant or something but you know I think a lot of people get intimidated to try new foods because they don't know how to cook them. Uh, so I thought I'd just give you a little demo about my favorite way to do it. So um, I've got a big skillet non-stick over here that I'm going to just put over medium heat. And then, so my plantains, they're sort of a medium ripeness. This is how I like them when they're green. They're quite starchy and um, more savory, sort of potato-like. And then as they turn yellow and then to black, you know, you can see this one's even blacker, they get softer and sweeter. So I like them sort of in this middle yellow with some black spots because then they're a little bit softer and not so hard and starchy, but they're not like gooey and too sweet. Um, so they're sort of a good in-between. So one thing you'll notice about plantains is if you would open them like a banana, it's a little harder to do. These ones are a little more ripe, which helps. When they're really green, they're really hard to peel. Um, so if you find one that is really stiff to peel off, all you want to do is maybe like cut off the ends and then run your knife carefully just through the peel and then if it's you know kind of stiff and not falling away you're just going to want to pry your thumb under here and loosen it but these ones are pretty ripe so they're peeling more easily which is always nice again kind of why I like them at this stage they can be a lot to handle when they're really um, when they're not very ripe because that peel is really hard to get off um, but these are coming off easy. I'm just going to peel these. So as you can see, they look a lot like a banana on the inside too. They're a little more of an orangey yellow. So you can see this one was a little bit stiffer, but you can still peel it off just fine. All right, let me get rid of these real quick. So now I like to cut these um, on a bit of a bias. You can just chop them. It doesn't really matter. Um, this just gives me more surface area so you get more browning. But I cut them about a little more than a quarter to a half inch thick. So you can see they just kind of look pretty at this one when they're angled like that. But it's totally up to you how you cut them. So, you know, these, they'll, you'll notice they sort of taste like a banana, but not quite as sweet. They're definitely different, um, but they go with a lot of really good seasonings. When they're sweeter like this, I'll show you my favorite way to eat them is with cinnamon, because it's just kind of warm and delicious, and I'm making these for breakfast right now, so I like to have sort of that sweet sweet flavor in the morning. Um, you know, if you <laughs> I used to love cinnamon toast as a kid with my eggs. Like I'd make my mom would make me white toast with butter and put cinnamon sugar on it and I'd put my scrambled eggs on that, <laughs> which I know probably sounds really strange, but it was really good. Um so I still like to have that sort of cinnamon sweetness with my eggs in the morning. And this is a good alternative. And who doesn't love cinnamon, right? Alright, almost done with these. But yeah, I mean you could do some pumpkin pie spice would be really good on these. If you want to go more savory, you can just do a little salt, maybe some paprika. Some of those like chili spices would be good with this. Um, ooh, maybe like some curry, like a garam masala would probably be really delicious. Um, okay, so my pan's getting warm. I'm going to add a little coconut oil. I don't like to add too much extra fat, you know, um, just enough so they don't stick. It would probably be about a tablespoon, maybe even a little less. Let's see, I've got my big tub of coconut oil from Costco. And then let that melt. 
again, you can use any oil. Butter would be delicious. Some ghee if you can't do dairy. Um, I like the coconut oil again. I'm just kind of sticking with that tropical vibe with the plantains. And now that that's nicely melted, I'm going to just start putting these all in here. Uh, you can just throw them in. I'm just like super anal. <laughs> I like things to be pretty, even when they're cooking in a pan. So, you know, I sit here and arrange them in concentric circles like a nerd. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to do slices. You could just chop them. Um, doesn't really matter. You just don't want them too thick because then, you know, the outside will burn and the inside will still be kind of starchy and, and chalky. Um, and I have this, like I said, over medium heat because I don't want to cook these too fast and burn the outside. There are sugars in there. And um, since these aren't super ripe, they are still starchy a bit on the inside. So if you burn the outside and the inside's not cooked, that's no fun. So I've just got a nice medium heat. We'll see if I can fit all these in here. I don't usually cook four at a time. I just sort of went for it. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> have fun with your food, guys, you know? Like doesn't have to be rocket science. You don't have to make it fancy all the time. I like don't follow recipes anymore, hardly. I mean, I do when it's fun and I take the time to plan out my meals like that, but nine times out of 10, I'm just winging it off of what I have on hand and I buy a lot of the same things every week and just make a lot of the same meals and, you know, change things up a little bit with just spices and stuff, but you know, it's funny, Matt will be like, I want you to make those pork chops you made last week. And I'm like, oh, you mean those ones where I grabbed random spices off the shelf and I don't remember what I used? You want me to recreate those? Gee, thanks. <laughs> um, so when I actually write things down and share them with you guys, it's, it's rare. I'm trying to do better about that. So, got them all in there, yay. And I'm just going to go ahead. I've got... Some sea salt. My favorite salt to use is this Redmond um, Real Salt. It's unrefined, so it's got a lot of the great essential minerals in there. Um, so that's just what I really like to use. But any sea salt's fine. Um, you can see it's kind of pretty. It's sort of reddish. But just a light sprinkling. You know, I don't want these to be salty. Too salty, but they actually are. That sweet salty combo is so good, as you probably know, like salted caramel and stuff. So. I like that combination. And then I'm going to add some cinnamon. You can be pretty generous with this. Can't have too much cinnamon. I mean, maybe someone would argue with me on that, but <laughs> I love it. Mm, lots of cinnamon. Yeah. Oh, it smells good. Cool. Some ginger would be really good. Maybe I'll sprinkle, sprinkle some ginger on a couple of them just to try that out. I've never done that. But in the spirit of experimentation, I will try it. Just on like half of them. Just to see. You know, guys, worst comes to worst, like... You try something you don't like it that much, well you learned and you try again, you'll learn what you like and it's kind of hard to go wrong with spices. Um, you know, my kind of go-to combo for pretty much any vegetable is like salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some paprika. You like can't screw up when you're using garlic and onions. So those are always the foundation of my meals. So you know, have fun and experiment. Get some new fresh herbs and spices if they've been sitting in your cupboard for a really long time because they lose their flavor and their power. Um, so you want them to be pretty fresh and, you know, I've said about, I've posted about it before, but I like to buy my spices in bulk. I'm just trying to see if I had any. Yeah, so like, go to the bulk bins and get your spices, like, you know, a scoop or two full at the time so you're not... They're not sitting on your shelf for too long, and it's so cheap to do it that way. It's like pennies to buy spices. All right, I'm gonna grab a little fork. And just sort of show you, they're starting to brown. 
So I'm going to cook these until they're pretty golden on the first side and then flip them over and keep cooking them again on the other side till they're nice and golden. They'll get really tender. They smell so good. So that's it guys. That's how I make my plantains. I'm going to have these right now for my breakfast with some eggs and probably some leftover veggies from last night. And so thanks for watching and let me know if you have any more questions about plantains. If you want any other ideas for how to cook with them, they're actually really versatile and go a lot of different ways. And they're a really great, safe, healthy starch op option to include in a healthy diet. So see you later. Bye.